The drug war's not in Kansas anymore. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com for another look at some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories. This is your Good News Next Week, episode number 38 for the week of October 24th, 2016. We've got that story, plus killing cancer. But first, a tweet from our buddy Eric. It's about turning algae into foam. This startup is harvesting wild algae to make your next pair of sneakers. Rob Falcon has always been a surfer, but he's always kind of been an inventor as well, and he's found a way to basically take those sort of toxic algae blooms that we hear about so often, that red tide, and there's much more science that I'm glossing over on this episode that'll be included, of course, in the show notes, as everything we say and play is always down there in the show notes. And we implore you to click and do more research for yourself, just as we also implore you to subscribe and to share and spread the word about these Media Monarchy episodes. So basically, Rob Falcon found a way to harvest that algae and turn it into foam. And he's already got one commercial product. They're actually using it as a foam traction pad and it's being made by Kelly Slater, professional surfer's design firm. We've seen Kelly Slater be interviewed by Luke Rakowski of We Are Change, and we can see these fantastic, simple inventions, which I know initially made me think, well, why don't we always just scoop up all the toxic bloom just to keep it from suffocating all the wildlife in there? Maybe the answer is there's never a monetary need to. Maybe now that you can actually turn this into something profitable that's also not harming the earth it's actually even helping the earth as you go along and do it that's maybe where the rubber meets the road and that's maybe where that uh capital anarchism will really kick in and come in our second story tweeted by our buddy ray goes to thailand where a research team at narasuan university has successfully extracted chemicals from the latex of rack plant r-a-k it's Calotropus giganti, for the Latin, which are capable of inhibiting the function of a protein which is essential for the growth of cancerous cells. So said Dr. Supawadi Pahara, a lecturer at the facility of pharmacy of the university. She added that the chemicals were found to be capable of resisting H1N1 flu virus in the early stage of infection and stopping the enzymes which cause tissue inflammation. They also go on to talk about targeting anti-flu and other Another elements of these people, I think, are already winning awards. Hopefully the idea, this goes open source. They do note that I believe it has been patented, but it's also been published in three international academic publications. However, what isn't patented is what we just told you. Extracted chemicals from the latex of the rack plant, Calotropus giganti, are capable of inhibiting the growth of cancer cells. You know what else helps inhibit the growth of cancer cells? Our cover story this week, tweeted by our friend Kyle, which notes that maybe the drug war is not in Kansas anymore because they kind of tried to stop it in Colorado, and the good news just spills across state lines. The Kansas Attorney General, Derek Schmidt, basically to survey the chicken littles that are, of course, that surrounded Colorado, we're all going to freak out. Oh, what's going to happen when they start growing a plant? He talked to 390 people in law enforcement agencies and district attorneys across Kansas, and the Kansas City Star has trumpeted the good news. The amount of marijuana being confiscated in Kansas appears to be dropping quickly. The Kansas Highway Patrol reported that the number of stops has gone down drastically. The amount seized has decreased by almost half. In some jurisdictions, law enforcement are no longer enforcing marijuana laws much, and even when they do, it's become difficult to win convictions. Our local deputies and sheriff tell me they stop at least five cars a day with personal use marijuana inside and absolutely refuse to issue a citation or a report for it. They note that the facility has so much Colorado weed in it that they had to install fans just to keep the air moving. Hopefully those fans weren't at taxpayer cost. If they were, you could refund it with all the money Kansas is going to make when they finally wise up and start growing more hemp, like more and more states are going to do all around the country. So this story actually has even an extra bit where they are seeing it in jury situations in cases that had nothing to do with marijuana when people were being fitted out to see whether they're going to make the jury. They would say things like, I don't think marijuana should be illegal. Now, whether or not they're just saying inflammatory things to maybe get thrown off a jury, that may very well be. 
Either way, that's good news this week. Some of our other stories that we are watching this week, tweeted by our buddy Joel, after the cops couldn't do the job, a gang of New Zealand vigilantes basically kicked all the meth dealers out of a town. And they basically said, they're the gang, they've kept other gangs out of the city, and now it's time for them to get the most insidious force out of their town. And that was the meth gangs. You can now buy a version of cannabis-infused wine. That's a tweet thanks to our buddy Titus Frost at Imperator Truth. And it's being made by Melissa Etheridge, who she says will give you a hopefully a full-body buzz with the new cannabis wine. So what's the logical conclusion, in a way, of a lot of this? Once you stop throwing people in prison for things that any free, sovereign human being should be allowed to do, you realize... Oh, the run-for-profit prisons are going to start to struggle as well. Here is a good news note from our friend Miles. Revolutionary prison system teaches organic farming to fight recidivism. So basically, an idea hatched up in Washington State, of course, who also has legal and recreational cannabis, came up with a project that they're doing at a prison in Pennsylvania where basically the prisoners are working on organic farms and they've graduated 10 people from that and hopefully what they've seen already shows that it actually discourages inmates from future criminal activity. That's how we're learning our way forward. If you've got some of the ways that we are winning and good news solutions oriented stories, tweet them using hashtag good news next week. You can always just reach out james at mediamonarchy.com. I appreciate you being here for some of the ways that we're winning and good news next week stories. This has been your good news next week for the week of October 24th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for mediamonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. <laughs>